now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. What's up, gamers, and welcome to another episode of the All In Podcast. Today we've got Mitchell and myself, The League Dad. Unfortunately, uh, schedules are not aligning again, and we don't have Kevin or Alistair today. Uh, and we've not, I don't think we've done just a duo with just the two of us. So, hey, I, I'm excited. Time, our first yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah, it might have been a long time. So far, a fact that I don't even remember. So excited to jump on this call with you. Um, so today we're really going to do dive in into our all pro list. And uh, Kevin and Alistair have given us their list on Discord so we can kind of aggregate uh, all of our choices and see where it goes from there. They're not here to argue their case. So, you know, if there's diff is different from ours, then we, we win because we get to argue, we get to lawyers are uh, a lawyer is ours up. So, you know, yep. it'll be, uh, it'd be their loss. But, uh, before we jump in, you know, final week of LCS happened. Uh, you know, I don't know if there were, there were a couple of tiebreakers. Um, did things kind of end up the way that you you figured they would end up there, Mitchell? Or do you have any? Were there any surprises or anything that you saw? Maybe improvements on the last week that uh, you know maybe surprised you. Um, well, co considering if we look all the way back to how we started the split in our list, our lists are very different after <laughs> yeah. the top two. Uh, you and I both had C9 GGS and one two that worked out. Um, and then the rest, right? Hundred Thieves, FlyQuest were not up there at all. Mm -hmm. um, Team Liquid did make a showing. Uh, EG was up there a bit higher than what people expected. Energy, same, a bit higher. TSM, much higher. If you go onto the dive and our list, TSM's sitting at like 7th to 10th place area, and they're like, what, 6th, I think, or something? So not yeah. bad. Um, pretty good for them. Uh, but yeah, this was very unexpected, I think, besides the yeah. top two. <laughs> Absolutely. I think for my top four, the only one I had wrong was I, I thought... Um... I think I thought FlyQuest, I had FlyQuest up there and they were mm. definitely the surprise, uh, you know, evil geniuses taking their spot up there. But yeah, definitely, I think a lot different from most uh, most people would think, which is why we love watching this, because you never know what's going to happen. Even strength, strength on paper means nothing uh, mm. because there's so many non uh, non paper factors that can make a difference in a season. Uh, but before we jump in really, uh, crazy news with double lift, uh, being in the hospital for internal bleeding. Like, uh, you know, this was announced Thanks. right after the, the week was over and apparently he had played even having this, this problem. So, uh, you know, double lift is one of those guys where if you remember way back when, when the tragedy of, uh, you know, his brother and, and parents and the whole murder thing that was going on there, it was, a. Uh, very very crazy and yet he still you know played through all of that and so nobody can question this guy's dedication i mean even as a vet um you know everybody i think would understandably be okay with him sitting out for some of these uh reasons especially you know when it comes to his health too uh but that's pretty crazy man the fact that he's still able to to show up did you have any thoughts on that i just thought i'd, I'd bring that up because that is pretty pretty nuts to see that right after the the week was done yeah, the, the first scenario for viewers who don't remember, uh, it was like during playoffs, it was what either semifinals or finals I that the information came out, and mm -hmm. he pretty much just won the entire... This is when he was on Team Liquid and on that mm -hmm. super crazy winning roster. Um, he, yeah, it, it he proved pretty much back then, he proved now that like the only reason he's in LCS and he's playing is because he really wants to be here. He yeah. had He's very competitive. Uh, I mean... Talk about this split. He did not have to come back, right? He mm -hmm. he has mentioned himself. He's taking massive pay cuts, like as a sense to stop being a streamer and play. Uh, he's on a pretty bad roster too, and he's still yeah. playing. Um, <clears throat> and he made sure that um he stuck it out until the end of the regular season. I I mean, but in actuality, I think it's great. Like mentality, it's very like anime. Like he doesn't care. He pushes through. But also, I'm worried for him, too, because he's like the goat, and I don't want him to die. <laughs> like, I don't want, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I don't yeah. want Faker to, like, have to permanently sure. retire if he forces himself to play with his wrist. I don't want Double Lift to, like, die. Like, I, yeah. he got had internal bleeding or something, and, like, I mean, that's where the blood's supposed to be, but I guess mm -hmm. it's still bad for some reason. So, 
medically, I don't know what's up with that, but mm-hmm. I, it's, you know, it must be stressful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, if the, the thing that I take away is, man, no, it doesn't matter what sport or what game you're playing. Like when, when you see somebody's kind of dedication to that, that's like the ultimate competitor. I don't care what sport no. you're playing. It, it doesn't matter if it's a video game. doesn't matter if it's a physical sport. Um, those are the greatest of competitors. And I'm glad that he's considered, you know, the goat for many people, you know, him and Bjergsen kind of the, the unanimous two, you know, and you could argue both sides, but double it even from the beginning. And for those of you who are newer, I mean, his up, his bringing into the sport, him getting kicked out of his parents' house and, you know, really being homeless and finding a home in, in Travis's uh, place at that time, you know, posting on Reddit, just seeking a place to live so he could play. I mean, that's the kind of thing ever since the beginning, He's had that same mentality of just wanting to compete, just wanting to play. And so uh, it really he deserves that status, uh, not yeah. just because he's won a lot, but because he's given his all and everything to this game. And, uh, you know, it's it's great to see that. But wishing him wishing him well, uh, like you said, we don't want him to be physically hurt. I'd love to see him way past his careers done in playing. You know, hopefully we can see more co-streams or even get on the cast. But, um, you know, it's time to, to go through our all pro votes. I mean, Will real quickly, um, I think you know there, there's going to be we're obviously going to have differences of of opinions of of how this goes. So I'm, I'll say my criteria of how I picked it, and then you could say your criteria. Sure. You know that way it kind of yeah. gives um, whoever's listening kind of context of how we picked ours. And I'm sure everybody else is different, so you can agree or disagree. Let us know in the comments or in Discord. But the way I picked mine is I I kept it simple. I was thinking if I had to pick a team. You know, if this is my team to play, who do I want? And I just pick every role. This is who I'd pick first. This is who I'd pick second. This is who I'd pick third. Um, so it might not always be shown in the stat line, but uh, when it comes to games, if I want to win, this is who I'd pick. And that would be my top three. Um, so what was what was your criteria? Yeah, that's a pretty no, that's a pretty good criteria. It's a pretty fair criteria to look at things uh, because you know sometimes I think it doesn't paint the whole picture how other people do. They're all pros. They are very stats heavy, or they are very like, mm-hmm. you know, they think of like the legacy of the player rather than just summer split performance. It's all mixed. So the way I did it was, um, I there's a lot of different aspects that go into what makes a good League of Legends player. Um, like someone's laning phase is very important, right? But also. How do they team fight? How do they skirmish? What's their champion pool? Um, how do they coordinate with their team? Um, what are their mechanics like? So I tried to like look at all these things and be as equal as possible. But the things that I focused on were like um, how good are they at their hands, right? How good are they at yeah. team fighting? How are they good at skirmishing? Absolutely. That's the things I cared the most about. Um, and I actually took like a smaller focus on uh, a player's ability to like lane. Um, the reason is I feel like in modern day League of Legends, laning phase is like kind of like this thing that has been talked a lot throughout the history is like, oh, this person has a really good laning phase. This person has a sh- sucky laning phase. But nowadays, I feel like having a good laning phase is just the default for a good player. So if you don't have a good laning phase, I'm probably not really talking about you at all. Yeah. Um, and I don't think you should be considered a good player if you don't have a, at least a... a a playable laning phase and then it's really the other stuff that i think is way more important in the new league of legends today team yeah. fighting how good your skirmishing is what's your what's your mechanics are how good are you coordinating with your, your team and hands like those are just more important um so i, I i'm gonna go into a little bit of a rant as i as i continue this current rant um, yeah, go ahead no so, so i think certain players like um in lcs like summit uh-huh. and jojo right they get praised a lot for their laning phases I'm actually not going to be as interested in these players uh, because of those things. I'm more interested in what other aspects that these players bring. So I think a lot of people are going to have Summit in their All-Pro. Spoilers, he's not going to make mine because even though he does have a great laning phase, the other stuff he lacks on, and I think it's more important in how League of Legends is played today, that the, the st- stuff he's lacking on is not... It doesn't outshine or, like, you know, his laning phase isn't good enough uh, because... Summit, you know, he he really pushes the boundaries of what you can do in laning phase. I think he finds a lot of opportunities that other players can't find in the laning phase or other lane dominant players, and that is cool. But I also think like if you compare like someone who's like kind of the opposite of Summit is like Impact, right? Mm-hmm. Very solid rock. He's not like gonna absolutely dominate in laning phase, but he's always gonna be consistent, show up later. Um, and I think it's because if you play top lane and you understand that like. Yeah, I can play Nar into Orn on a lower level and emulate what Summit does and get a huge CS lead and like 
get to her plates and shove them in all the time. But Impact, right, why doesn't he do what Summit does? And it's because he actually can probably do a lot of the things that Summit does. He just chooses not to, to be like risk adverse and be like, I am not going to aggressively trade to save my cooldowns and save my health. I'm not going to challenge you on every single CS. Like I'm going to let you get some CS and I'm going to, you know, give up some CS myself. Um, so his laning stats aren't as dominant looking as Summit, where Summit says, I'm going to do all in you if you go for the CS. I'm going to trade for you aggressively. And, you know, the risks are obviously very risky. He gets ganked a lot. He dies to ganks. He dies in the side lane all the time. Um, so I think that the things that JoJo and Summit do in lane, other players can do that are as good as them. They just choose not to because it's risky. And we see when JoJo in like that middle dip of the split, he was getting ganked a lot and dying because he had no pressure uh, from the rest of his teammates. So that was a bit of a rant on laning phase and why my list might look a bit different from other people's. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's, it's good to explain that in context because I, I, I agree with you, you know, yeah. laning is just part of it. And honestly, you know, gosh, there's so many times I've seen where even someone like I'll take Jojo, for example, there was a lane where he was down like 30 CS. He had made a bad roam. Um, I think it was APA that he was playing against mm. uh, and it was team liquid. And um, you know, so that set him back a far bit. Uh, he was playing Tristana, but Eventually, that kind of got a race, and he caught up because of how they assign lanes, how they give farm. Like, you know, a few minutes or so later, he's able to stabilize. And so that that lead that you have, you kind of have to capitalize that right away. And I think teams are good enough, um, you know, I'd say fairly good enough, at least in their understanding of, hey, we're down, we're a little behind here. Uh, he's our carry or whatever, so we need to catch him up and yeah. kind of uh, offset that. And so I agree in the sense that laning is nice and. For a stats person, it is a kind of an easier, measurable way to say, "Oh, this guy's good," like because yeah. you can look at the last a stats, look at his CS per minute at ten, his his experience, you know, how far ahead of goal in gold is he, you know. Um, but it it really does not explain a lot of things that make that player good or valuable to his team. Um, so I totally agree with that. Um, and even you know, going to something like jungle, like pathing is one aspect, but also, are you making plays like there's two like people might value different things. And I think, you know, it, it's got to be a balance depending on your role, because you you definitely have to be a good laner, but you also need to be efficient and make an impact in your lane. If you're top laner, right? They always say yeah. top lanes an island. But uh, so laning is important because you're kind of left alone up there. You make your own leads most of the time. Uh, but also, are you going to be relevant later in jungle? Are you pathing correctly? Um, you know, but sometimes pathing and just farming, not making an impact doesn't really help unless you're super scaled and relevant later. But at the same time, you're not helping your team early on. So you kind of got a balance of making plays for your team around the map, being impactful early on. So your laners can get ahead or find advantages, um, because if you're not there early on, then it's kind of you're kind of irrelevant. So I think in all the different lanes and positions there are, you have to find that balance of of play style and I totally agree. And so I think it's worthy of the rant is, is what yeah. I'm trying to say in my long <laughs> nice. rant here. Yeah. Um, but let's jump in. Let's just jump okay. in. Cause this is the sure. fun part, right? Yep. And we'll just go right from the top all the way down. So we'll start with top lane. I could say that, well, actually I haven't heard yours yet. So I'll say mm -hmm. mine, me, Alistair and Kevin all had licorice as our first team. All pro is yours yep. the same. Uh, yes. Yeah. I have okay. the same. Yeah. 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 All right. um, yeah I mean, do you want to do yeah, one, two, three for each? Okay, let's do that. Player. That's a good, yeah. good idea. Okay, so I had licorice. My yeah. next one would be impact. Yeah, uh, oh, wow. and then my third one would be Dokla. And I actually yeah. didn't consider Dokla really until you had mentioned uh, them. Yeah. And yeah. then when I thought about more of my criteria of like who would I want on my team, uh, you know, impact for obvious reasons can always make an impact. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, in every game. And Dokla, while his laning hasn't been great, I'd say he's probably one of the weaker laners, uh, even when he has a favorable matchup. In my opinion, from the eye test, this guy's always made an impact. doesn't matter if he goes down 50 CS. And so if I needed to have a weak side, you know, whatever, or some guy that I know would make an impact in the game no matter what, it'd be Dokla. Yeah. Um, and let me just read real quick. Uh, Alistair just had Licorice as his top. He didn't list other ones. And Kevin had Licorice and Summit as his second. Mm -hmm. um and so yeah i'll, I'll let you go now <laughs> yeah so my t my my top lane all pro is uh it's actually licorice fudge and then dokla okay um, so i did have fudge in there um and in licorice i think for first all pro we all had him i think a lots of people are just gonna have him he's kind of like the complete top laner right now mm -hmm. right he has a really good laning phase 
Uh, even though he didn't show it this split, he does have a big champion pool. He just played mostly just Jax and Renekton, yeah. though. <laughs> um, yeah. But we do know he has a big champion pool. And I also think that when it comes to just coordinating with his team and making big plays in team fights, that's where Licorice really shined above all the other top laners. Um, but then, going off to that, I think Fudge is honestly in a similar boat, but he gets a lot less jungle attention from his own team than Licorice. And so I think Fudge did a lot of similar things where he was usually solid in lane. Has a big champion pool, pretty much only played Renekton and Kazante though. Um, yeah. So we didn't get to see it. But um, I do think also Fudge, he would be put behind a lot and have a lot of situations where he kind of gets screwed by his own team. You can also hear about it when he talks on like the desk and, uh, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. stuff. Um, but he was still able to make big plays in team fights. And then Dokla... Much worse laning phase than the other two guys that listed, but like you said, really shows up later in the game. And something that I noticed about Dokla or their other top laners that might be in here, like um, Summit or Revenge, uh, mm -hmm. is that even though Dokla does get pretty punished in the laning phase, it's usually because he has almost no help from his team. He yeah. is hard direst, hard weak sided. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he really doesn't get any help, and he does tend to like take that those bad situations and make them worse in the CS department. Like I think a better top laner might be able to be in the same situation and have more farm, but he sure. doesn't die very much. What I noticed is like he will get camped by the enemy team. He'll be weak sided and he will go down a ton of CS, but he won't actually chain feed. That's where the other top laners do fall short for me. Summit, Revenge, other guys, right? I think they can kind of get into and then Revenge, especially he doesn't fit in here because his mid game and late game team fight coordination with his team is quite off. He seems to be pretty separate from the rest of EG. So that's why, yeah, we both have Dokla as a third there. And, Cause yeah. it's kind of hard, I think after licorice to see what top laner is really that good. That's a, so, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. I also think, uh, because they're kind of left on this Island. Like I do think what's not seen here is like mentality, right? Because yeah. The tilt is definitely obvious. I don't know if it's tilt or just like, ah, whatever, YOLO, right? It could be, it still hurts your team either way, right? So Summit is a good example of like, there have been times where I feel like Team Liquid has played around his deaths and it's a quality death. Like he died, but maybe it looked coordinated where they're like, okay, I'm dead, I'm dead, go get this or something. But then there's still yeah. been plenty of times where you're like, he died for no reason. There's nothing on the map. They didn't get anything in return. And you're just like, all right, that's a YOLO play or that's just him inting. With Licorice and a mindless impact, Dokla, even Fudge, though, I agree with Fudge. You know, he knows he's on that island, kind of laughs about it, right? Yeah. Uh, when you see him on the on the interviews, talking with his teammates and stuff like that. Like Licorice, I've seen just from interviews and just his play style. These guys don't seem that the, like they get tilted uh, or, or they have a really good... You know, they do a really good job of hiding it, at least. And yeah. they, they stay pretty cool, calm, collected, can think straight, don't need to force anything. I just need to not die. You know, yeah. Impact has kind of been that player forever. And I saw it in Dokla. So I just wanted to add that as far as, you know, an unseen maybe metric that I, I think is important, especially in the top lane where you're kind of isolated and, and yep. you know, going off on your own. Um, so let's go to jungle. Did you have any other things on top lane? You good or, uh, no, I mean, for the most part, I think top lane is generally our weakest role. So, I mean, licorice standing out on top is, I mean, it's great for him. He's not been considered a good top laner for a couple of years and he is pretty unanimously the best right now. So, okay. Yeah. All right, let's go to jungle. So jungle, uh, Alistair had blabber, uh, yep. Kevin had blabber and river as second. Yep. Um, I had blabber river and then contracts was my third. Um, and I know like there, there could be, you know, other possibilities for, for that third spot or even the second or first spot, but, uh, I'll let you go list yours and then I'll, I'll talk about kind of why I pick, I picked mine. No, sure. Mine's actually the exact same. I, okay. I have blabber first river second and, uh, contracts third. Uh, the third spot I think is pretty open to discussion, right? If you told me you want to put Pioshik second or third, yeah, I mean, yeah. I would be like, sure. I mean, you can make an argument. I can be convinced either way. But first and second, I think we're pretty clearly drawn. Uh, it was really close between Blabber and River, I think, this split. Both so. junglers had an amazing split, looking like the, the best players on their team sometimes. Um, and honestly, the thing that decided it for me was the tiebreaker. I, like... 
Both yeah. junglers are great against everybody, and they're great against each other. But the fact that Blabber wins in the head-to-head, -head, it's like it's hard for me to not um, give it to Blabber, right? Um, so I was impressed that Blabber had so many good games. Both Blabber and River had a couple of stinker games, but for the most part, like they are the most consistent players on their team, making good plays. Um, and honestly, when I went back and like try to count how many stinker games they had, like River had like actually one more stinker game than Blabber, and both these guys yeah. had like two or three or four, like in the whole split, right? So I think that's quite impressive to be that consistent. Um, but honestly, it's like Blabber just edged out like just the tiny bit, right? Those both these players are huge playmakers, big champion pools, clever pathing, insane engages in the mid and late game, and. Blabber just has that little extra bit that I I really wanted to give it to River, but you know I could not. Yeah. I mean, again, like with my criteria, who would you rather have on your team? I mean, even if it's the slightest of margins, if you had to only pick one, would it be Blabber or River? Yeah. Um, I know for me, I think not to say it doesn't knock River in any you know measure, but if I had to pick by the slimmest of margins, yeah, I, I think I just give it to Blabber. I mean, again, they're, they're ranked number one, the tiebreaker show. I mean, honestly, if it boils down to these two teams, I hate to say, cause I want golden guardians to wins, but I still think cloud nine has the edge, man. Like it just yep. seems like they're uh, the better team cohesively. Uh, so it's really hard to, to not put Blabber in that number one spot. I think maybe most people would say that contracts might be the, the question mark in the third yeah. place because Piosic also did have a pretty good split. Uh, I know for me, my, my reason is I would rather have, um, I don't know. I just felt like there were more highs with contracts and more yeah. notable highlights for me. Um, and so if I'm just trying to think again, this is my third pick, right? So uh, that would be the only reason I think that I would put that. I, 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 just for me, I think there's been a little more stinkers from Piosic mm. uh, during the split, but that's kind of why I put him in there. Did you have any other reasons of why contracts over Piosic or any other jungler? Yeah. Um, so, uh, so actually, <laughs> I forgot to say this part of the criteria at the beginning, uh, but I'll, I'll mention it now. Uh, it is something that played a part to why there's more NRG members than maybe yeah. some might expect. But I actually value like uh, how well someone played at the end of the split than the beginning of split. Okay, yeah. Because I see LCS as like, it's not like every game is the same. I actually That's think true. that the purpose of LCS is to get better to prepare for playoffs. That's the regular season. And if you're better at the end of the regular season, it's more important than to be better at the beginning of the season and be worse, right? So yeah, yeah. energy really picked it up in the second half of the split. And then now there are high ranking like in the standings. Uh, at fifth place, and I I just think that it's more impressive. And sure, their record is worse than like EG or TL because of that part of the beginning of the split. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's not I'm not really counting that. I'm, we're looking at individual players and how well they played. So for contracts, I do think he had a much better end of like second half of the split. But he was still actually very quite good at the beginning of the split. Yeah. Uh, his team just couldn't translate. I think for contracts as a jungler, he's just more consistently able to make plays. Pioshik, he also is able to consistently make plays, but it feels like it doesn't always carry over to the other parts of the game. Like TL throws so many games, and it does feel like Pioshik is on engage. It's half Gordon J and half him's fault of why they throw in the mid game, right? So um, yeah. it, it, it's it's a slight margin too, right? Pioshik and contracts, I think they're right there. Like I personally like contracts more as a player. He's been around a long time. Mm -hmm. I've just been impressed that he stopped inting so dramatically. Like he had one big sneaker game this split, and the rest were either solid or okay. I I am just impressed by by the fact that he's able to do that, and I like that he picked it up in the second half of the split. I think Pioshik. I mean, he had to suffer through multiple mid laners, so there's a caveat there. But sure. I. You know, I just like contracts a bit better. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think too, it's like if only Summit could learn that, right? Because then he'd be a more complete player. Like if he yeah. could learn to just pull it back a little bit, it'd be like, man, you could be kind of the best of both worlds. Little tangent, but it, that's who comes to mind when, I mean, even Blabber when he first started was very inty, right? Like, or he was Quite like, it, yes. go in and that's it. I only got one button, right? And yeah. it's So, I mean, all players, I think, and maybe that's, part of development right and if you don't ever learn that then you don't really grow as a player in my opinion yeah um, and i think that yeah even though you're really good at something you need to be able to balance things and i think that's where summit still is like he needs to 
get that through his head somehow. Um, but let's let's uh, go through mid lane because uh, I think we, this we're a little divided here, even on our first place picks. Because mm-hmm. I know Alistair and Kevin both picked Gory mm-hmm. as their number one, and then Kevin had uh, JoJo as his br- uh, runner up. Uh, for me, I actually had JoJo number one, then Gory, uh, and then I don't even know if they qualify. But for me, I would put APA and insanity as number two i'd like actually split them since they both mm. kind of had you know uh split time there uh so if i could put and them together is. if yep. i could put them together that would be my my <laughs> third place uh uh all pro mid but w- what about you yeah uh my first is going to be gory also actually um and my second is going to be palafox actually okay yeah i, I think that. Palafox. You're on that energy hype train. My I friend. am a bit on the energy hype <laughs> like train. It, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, see, the reason I mean, you're going to see there's a noticeable, uh, well, trend, yes, but there's a disappearance in the bot lane. You know, that I'm not going to okay, be putting yeah, them as true. much, mm-hmm. which is, you know, probably going to explain their fifth place standing. But I think Palafox is deserving a second and third. It's going to be JoJo. Yeah. Um, okay. So first for Gory, I'll talk about him and why yeah. uh, maybe other people are going to put him too. I think it's going to be a pretty popular uh choice for gory first or second all pro uh he just seems like the most complete mid laner i actually think there's a pretty sizable gap between gory and the other players uh, for my criteria and that he has always a solid laning phase he's never behind in the laning phase and sometimes he's ridiculously ahead if you think about his like 10k gold LeBlanc. at uh, like 15 minutes like fi- actual double of jojo's gold right yeah. um i he has a lot of these standout games, and his non-standout games are always actually really good, like really solid, or even a bit better. If you think about the games that Golden Guardians lost, right, like the tiebreaker we just saw, Gory solo killed Emenez and was like the only person doing really insanely well on GGS. It was the rest of his team that was just dying. Uh, he ended that game like like three and three or something, which you know doesn't sound great, but he was like three and zero or something earlier yeah. on. I think Gory is. A huge playmaker, has a huge champion pool, really solid laning phase, is sometimes having a winning laning phase, and I think he was just the best uh, mid laner this split for those uh, metrics, yeah. Um, yeah. I think, uh, you know, so for, I, I totally agree. Like, it's, it's you know, you tell me, Gory, I'm like, yeah, of course, right? No. Uh, for my criteria, again, with JoJo, right? If I'm assembling this team, uh, and I have Licorice, Blabber, and then my other two as my team, yeah. Uh, because I think a lot of JoJo's errors are because he is the veteran player on his team, right? Mm-hmm. Like his, to me, if he's surrounded by more veteranship or players that kind of know how to play more, I think JoJo skyrockets to the top, right? So mm-hmm. if you were to put it in a vacuum, I, I actually agree. I think Gory's the better complete mid laner, but I think JoJo is just so freaking good um in laning phase i i actually think he's better than gory in laning phase um mm. in a vacuum but um you know if you give jojo uh maybe a a more confident jungler or a jungler who knows what he's doing uh you know that mid duo synergy so again these are things outside factors which i know people are like that's not what criteria but for me like this is my team if i'm assembling my five greatest players mm-hmm. in each role i'm slotting jojo in there because i think with uh good teammates or with veteran teammates where he's not having to do maybe the shot calling or maybe the you know macro decisions he can just focus on his hands and make those plays to me that's my number one pick that's the only reason why i put him there but gory is perfectly acceptable uh who did you have as your third place I, yeah I it's jojo it's oh, pal jojo. fox okay. and jojo yeah um yeah, pal yeah. fox yeah I totally agree with the the JoJo idea. I mean, it's called an all pro team, right? Like how you yeah. see it on like the I don't know Lowly Sports website, you'll see this is your first all pro team. So it makes sense to have that criteria. I think it's mm-hmm. fair to like think of it like who, who's the my first team that I have. Yeah. Uh, for me, yeah, I'm just looking at like the players a bit more in a vacuum right. in a sense. Pal Fox second to give him some credit is I really feel like. Maybe he looks so good because sometimes FBI is so inconsistent. Yeah. But when we get to these games where I feel like energy puts all their effort into getting FBI ahead, and yet somehow it's Palafox carrying those mid and late game team fights. I feel like Palafox also has a very solid laning phase. Uh, he has a wide champion pool. He plays the meta stuff, right? He plays a lot of that LeBlanc shiv stuff. Um, but he is just that mid and late game team fight monster and playmaker that I think it's it 
he probably maybe gets a bit too much credit from me, but it's because his ADC is kind of so inconsistent. He looks so much better, and he's able yeah. to drag energy across the finish line when maybe, I don't know, another t- player like JoJo, why he's third, is if his team falls apart, he doesn't actually bring them over the finish line with his amazing play. I do mm-hmm. feel like uh, a player like Pal Fox and Gory, this split, have been able to do that more. I know JoJo has it in him, but if I'm being honest, it's hard to give him credit if he doesn't show it because his team is kind of struggling to let him carry. I feel like JoJo just kind of falls apart when the game is lost. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I agree so, with that completely. Yeah, yeah 100%. Uh, the reason I would have put APA and Insanity here, even if they don't qualify for the number of games, I'm still going to do it anyways. It's my list. I can do it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but yeah. I, I mean, just both players instantly made an impact on their team. Like, I, I don't know if, you know, we may see later down the ro- road, like I, I said, I had still had some slight reservations about um, insanity because a lot of his games were picking like these ADC mid laners like Graves and Kaiza and even Tristana, right? Like, that's great, right? But I, I still have yet to see how he does on Azir or other uh, champs. And so I'm still withholding 100% uh, kind of evaluation. APA has shown a lot of the zigs, which I like, right? But uh, and he's had some good uh, Trishana games as well. But again, still early to tell. But however, the reason I put them there is because they were thrown into their teams and instantly made huge impacts. And so, yeah. like, yeah, if I'm going to pick somebody up, I- I'm picking those guys. Whereas the rest of the list on there, I'm just not as confident. You know, mm-hmm. whether or not maybe they're more complete players. But if I had to pick right now, those are those are the uh, the other two that I'm going to. Yeah, I, I think uh, it, it's good to say, uh, and it's hard to maybe justify because of their number of games, but Insanity, he only missed three games. So mm-hmm. I think Insanity, uh, you could definitely argue that he deserves yeah. a third place spot because um, essentially his team is so much worse too, right, mm-hmm. than these, other, these right. other players we're talking about. One person I do want to make notice of that I think maybe might be surprising to viewers that will show up in other people's lists is the lack of Eminez. Uh, That's true. Mid- first mid laner on the best team in, in the LCS right now. Um, I do hear like he gets a lot of praise on the broadcast and on the dive and from other people. I think though, like to also a lot of people, when we watch Eminez, it, it it's not as impressive as he'd like to be. There's a lot of awkward moments. There's a lot of inti moments. Um, like there's a lot that stick out to me. Like he has some great Tristana games, but in those great Tristana games, there are so many awkward moments where he looks uncoordinated yeah. with his team. Um, his Lissandra game was really bad, uh, where he TP bot lane. So I, I still think Eminez is a, a solid player, but he is just a little too inconsistent for the regular season, a little too inty, uh, a little too disconnected with his team. Kevin has said before in previous broadcasts that, um, Eminez seems like he fits well with C9 as a great player in that environment. But mm-hmm. if you're thinking about it in this, like, what's my team that I want to yeah. draft? Eminez doesn't fit into teams that are not specifically C9, right? C9, yeah. It looks like if Eminez were to be put on a middle, middle tier team, he would struggle really hard. And that's not the worst thing, right? Because sometimes players are elevated by their uh, by their teammates to be even better. But like, if I think of like Gory on a middle t- or lower tier team, he literally was on a mid tier team at the beginning <laughs> of this year, right? He was on Golden Guardians to start 2023, and he brought them up you know so um that's why i think Eminez is probably missing for most of our lists yeah yeah i think that's a really good point uh because yeah he's not that's the first place team i also maybe want to highlight like i do agree with your assessment but i think what might even compound that even more is that you've got two possible mvp candidates on that team and blabber yeah. and berserker it's true right so that probably you know when you're just comparing like on the same team it it's hard like he might actually be better than what we see but you know i all of the things you said are correct and i i believe that to be true but it also might just compound the fact that he's got such really good teammates that that adds to that which i think is a great transition into the yeah. abc all pro mm-hmm. right because all of us had berserker well i don't know about you yet but i'm i would be very surprised if he didn't put berserker on there because at least for me um berserker is at another level and then everybody else is kind of like there's good ADCs, but I just don't think there's anybody that touches Berserker. Uh, yeah. So that that that's why. So for, I had uh, Berserker, Alistar had Berserker. Uh, it was for Kevin Berserker, and then he had Unforgiven a second. Mine yep. was Berserker, Yawn, and Double Lift, which I will explain <laughs> in mm-hmm. a little bit. But Berserker, Yawn, and Double Lift. Uh, what was yours? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, mine's Berserker first, um, and then it's Stixe second. Okay. Uh, and then third it is Eon. Um, so Berserker first, I mean, it's pretty obvious. I think this is an interesting one for some people. Uh, if you actually look at Berserker stats this split, they're actually quite poor. They're not the greatest. I think he's had better stats in the past. Uh, notably, it's like his laning phase is not very dominant, uh, and his damage percent share is also not that dominant. And that's another thing, right? We were talking about Eminez, where sometimes his teammates are so good that it's like, well, what are you really supposed to do, right? Like, I like how am I, how is an ADC supposed to have a high damage percent if he's playing Ash and the game's over at 15 minutes because mm -hmm. your jungler is just killing everybody, right? Sure. So yeah. it's not always Berserker's fault. Uh, and I think, though, like, when people... People are going to heavily influ like index on the eye test for Berserker, and if it was just eye test for Berserker, it's, it's a hands-down hard to make a different conversation that. He, he looks like the best player in the LCS sometimes. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I think Berserker deserves a first spot, uh, and if he doesn't deserve a first spot, it's likely that you are indexing more into the stats, which I think are relevant, and you're indexing more into you know his lack his dominant lack of dominance in the laning phase, which is still relevant too. But I think for us and our criteria, we don't have as much. I would say I that. know what Alistair would be saying right now yeah. if he if he was on here. He would say <laughs> that your laning is dictated by your support, and yep. uh, you know with them playing, and not that Sven's a bad support, but he has been playing mostly enchanters. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly for the sake of them kind of scaling up, uh, which you can get leads. I'm not saying you can't get leads there. And maybe, you know, if he had a better support, like a more playmaking support or more someone who knows how to trade better then maybe he gets better CS leads. But I know that's what Alistair would be saying. So I'm channeling my inner Alistair and, and, and possibly that being a reasoning for his laning stats. But you're, you're absolutely right in that, you know, it, I test, I think, people remember moments and he's had a lot of moments where you're just like oh my gosh this guy's sick you know especially mm -hmm. the ash game where you know uh for who are they playing against i can't even remember They're playing against team was, liquid. So good. was yeah. it seemed like that long yeah banger yeah. of a game yeah it was yeah. so good and it's just like you know you remember those things and you're like yeah this guy's insane um so i want to hear your reasoning for stick say uh yeah. because i didn't have him on my list so uh your reasoning for stick say yeah 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 so i'll talk about stick say um Obviously, he also suffers from the same problem as Berserker, where sometimes his team is so good, he doesn't look like he does much. Uh, I will also admit that 6 days laning phase is actually not necessarily a weakness, but it's not his strong suit. I think other ADCs you could find that are not on this list in the league have better laning phases than 6 a um, But, you know, he does kind of get abandoned by who he quite a bit. Who he is a big That's roamer. True. So that that is a caveat to think about where... Um, you know, Core JJ and Zven, they sit in lane much more with their ADCs and protect them compared to Huhi. Uh, but for Stixe, one thing that he really shines across that is specific to my criteria is just, just team fighting, just playmaking, just being a threat in skirmishes and team fights. And like, he is a big playmaker. He, he has many, many moments, especially on Aphelios, where he comes in and he wins a fight by himself. It's late into the game. It's at a very pivotal dragon or baron fight, and he takes it into his own hands. And that's exactly why I praise Berserker too, right? It's, these two guys feel like uh, the game is never lost because they're the ADC and that they can get farm, they can get fed, they can get to a position in the late game where they have enough space, they win the entire fight by themselves. So that's why six yeah. is there. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. Um, you know, he does his job. He does his job well. Uh, yep. And you're right with the with the support proximity. I mean, the two uh, number two and three on my list is Yon and Double Lift, who they get a lot of support love. Right. So yep. that definitely helps their their case. I know a lot of people might be saying I'm just coping with Double Lift. Uh, <laughs> and part of that is probably true. Uh, but, you know, for the same reason I have impact on here, who's on a ninth place team is that, uh, you know, these guys, despite their ter their team's terrible showing, I think have been the bedrock of their team. And I, and uh, again, you know, we put them on a better team. I think they actually perform really, really well. Um, so double lift to me has honestly on most games, most wins uh, he's the only one. And I think honestly, hundred thieves is playing like this too. It's like they're, he is their hope to win a game. Um, and you know, there have been times where, yeah, I'm just like looking at the rest of the team and double if this like you're hanging on because he's been farming well, he's not dying, he's getting assists. And, you know, you're just waiting for that that breaking point where he can 
get his items and now we're online and you just see their team fighting is as good as it can plus his hands still seem really good to me um you know at his at his older age um he has had some flubs but i still think it's pretty good jan to me has been pretty uh outstanding throughout the entire split i i don't i think he's had some good dynamic moments i don't think there's been any moments where i felt really uh like not great about him and i think part of the reason i have him on here is because my expectations of him going into the season mm. weren't high at all mm. um i didn't think that he was uh gonna be doing that well i think even kevin had mentioned that when they were boot camping in korea like literally everybody was popping off except for young so mm. uh i wasn't really thinking he was going to come out and do that well but he has uh the reason that um you know i think most people are probably wondering why i don't have forgiven unforgiven on my list is you know, I think he was really good in the first half. Yeah. Um, and again, we're putting more weight into the, the final. I don't think he's been terrible, but he's just been not memorable. Uh, you know, there hasn't been any anything where I, I've really felt like he stood out, even though their team hasn't performed well. So that's why I don't have him on there. But that's the reason why I have uh, my list. And I'd love to hear if you, you know, you have your list, put it in discord so we can argue about it, <laughs> put it in, <laughs> in the comment sections. I'd love to know the, uh, specifically ADCs. Cause I do think we have, I mean, you could even argue wild turtle is a possible third yeah, I think been so. a highlight on their team. Yeah. I mean, FBI, I think you could argue it, you know, yeah. there are some people who would disagree, but I think you can argue it. So there really is a ton of uh, ADCs that I think could make a case at least for that third spot. Um, yeah. I, uh, yeah, just to comment about Eon also, I think that something that impressed me about him, especially compared to last split, was like, he isn't making the, those common mistakes that he is in like the laning phase in the early parts of the game. And he, he's not as bombastic as a playmaker as Stixay and Berserker. But mm -hmm. I feel like when I think of other ADCs in the league, uh, he's actually the third person that I would put that can make that big play. Uh, that could win them the game because yeah. there's a lot of team liquid losses where I feel like it is definitely like Yeon's one V nining kind of thing. And mm -hmm. T and TL do end up losing, but he's putting out tons of damage and staying alive and yeah. playing fights uh, edges of the fight really well. So um, yeah, I think Yeon deserves it. Unforgiven is a player that probably has one of the best laning phases in the uh, league. And it's probably the most consistent at just being like that ADC that, um, you know, it's like the dream ADC, like consistent laning phase always shows up at the right time, right place. But Unforgiven, yeah, he is lacking in the big plays. He is lacking in that, like, those big highlight moments where EG is behind. They are struggling to get their footing in the game, but they have a lot of farm with their ADC. Now it's time for Unforgiven to make that 1v9 play, right? His whole team's dead. His whole team's behind. Whereas Unforgiven with the big cleanup with the outplay. I think he plays team fights well. Uh, and especially when his team's ahead, he plays them near perfectly. But when his team's behind, he just dies. He just disappears. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why I didn't put Unforgiven here. But I think you can make an argument for third. I think for me personally, third is like you could put Eon, uh, FBI, Unforgiven. You could even make an argument for Wild Turtle or Tactical, honestly. Yeah. Like yeah. for this Tactical, third spot. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because yeah. he was the bright spot of their team as well. Yeah. So definitely a lot of <laughs> a lot of choices that you could lawyer up and probably convince somebody uh, to yeah. put there as a third slot. So absolutely. not Prince though. That's the noticeable thing. Prince is very far gone from this yeah. list, in my opinion. I think Prince had a very Crazy. bad split, like the worst I've seen Prince play ever. <laughs> I mean, so. from MVP talks in the beginning of Spring Split to like yep. not even mentioned on All Pros, pretty. Pretty insane. Uh, hopefully yeah. they can bounce back. Um, all right, let's go to support. Not this year. Not this, not this year. year. Spoiler. <laughs> not this year. Definitely not. Um, yeah. So let's go to support. Uh, let's see. So Alistair had uh, who he. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I you know I haven't actually been reading his. <laughs> so I, his his runners up are actually here. Let me just go over it real quick. We don't need to talk about. It. He did have top as his uh, second place was Revenge. Uh, mm -hmm. His jungle was River for his second place. Mid was Palafox. Uh, for hey, second yep. place his adc for second place was stick okay uh, we have the same so, first second yep there you go uh and then uh support he has who he first and then he has ven and core jj that's exactly the same as my list uh kevin has um who he and then core jj is his second mm -hmm. um who did you have who did i have so uh i did also have who he for first okay that is 
pretty much the same as everybody. If you watch the broadcast, everybody had who he for mm-hmm. the first. Uh, second, I did have Zven. I think that Zven could have almost missed this just yeah. because I think so uh, too. Yeah, uh, because like people were commenting about his engaged supports, but he really picked it up yeah. with his engaged supports. This last week yeah. is yeah. actually what convinced me to put him there. When he was on Rel, I was like, okay. I mean, Rel is OP, yeah. but he he did play pretty darn well. And so I'm convinced, especially you know playing better teams, like, okay, this guy has, it seems like he can, he can do some stuff. So yeah. Yep. Um, and then... Uh, third, this was a tough one for me. It was really hard to put someone third. I mean, I wanted to put Core JJ, but something that put me off of Core JJ is like, I just noticed whenever TL throws in the mid game, it's actually a lot of times off of Core JJ's engage why exactly. they didn't make it. So I didn't. Can put I guess? Him. Can I guess your third? Sure, go ahead. Guess. And guess. Yeah. I think it's. I think you have Ignar. Uh, yeah, I do have Ignar. <laughs> well, okay, so for two reasons, two reasons, I thought it was Ignar. One, because yeah. you're on that energy hype train. But two, I, um, yeah. two, I think Ignar is doing what I believe Core JJ should have been doing the whole split, which is just pick engage supports and yep. just lean into that. But go ahead. I'll, I'll let you continue. I just wanted to guess. <laughs> no, you, it's a good guess. It's a good guess. Yeah. yeah um. Ignar, I did have him third. You could argue Core JJ here. You could argue even maybe Ayla here too. Mm-hmm. Um, but I put Ignar because he just had that great second half of the split that I really wasn't expecting, and it looked better than what the other uh, brought. I think he, when he's not messing around with the range supports, he looks like a really insane engaged support. Uh, he's making so many huge plays for energy. Like It's actually insane the kind of rel and Alistar or engages that he sometimes get. And I also think that he doesn't, maybe it's because of just how the team dynamics works and contracts and Dokla and Palafox, they're able to make plays to help out Ignar. And maybe Core mm-hmm. JJ just doesn't have that support from his team, right? But I feel like Ignar does not really lead the charge in bad engages. Core JJ has had a couple stinker engages that have given TL that reputation of a bad mid game and a bad late game team fighting stuff. I think it's. I honestly think sometimes it is just entirely Core JJ's fault. There's that clip where um, Jat is like the famous one where Jat's like, I hate this team. God, he's like talking about how T Lake goes so far ahead, but they inevitably throw. And then they do throw on camera, right? Yeah. Uh, as the script goes. That yeah. engage that was the, the late game throw was Core JJ sitting on a ward, flashing over a wall on Rakan to engage on the ADC who had cleanse flash. The enemy ADC cleanse flashed out of. Core JJ's engaged and all of Team Liquid died. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that was his fault. He made the play, he made the call to yeah. do a one man uh, engage while sitting on a ward. So yeah. um, I just think Ignore has a little less of those and it's a tight margin. But I mean, Huhi and Zven are very clearly 1 2 and I think they deserve it. Um, I think, I think Core JJ for, you know, for Kevin. It's a little bit of that copium. I mean, he really wants it. I think so, it. too. I'm not afraid bit. to say it. I think Kevin <laughs> does cope. He's going to have some words for us uh, oh, after yes. this. But <laughs> I, I agree. I, I do think, um, you know, it is really close because I do think I, Ignar was my fourth. Um, mm. Because I, again, like to me, if Core just leaned into to playing engage supports, maybe he gets more comfortable because he has had some flubs on his engages, which mm. is what he's supposed to be known for. Yep. Um, and I don't know if that's like, you know, there's definitely got to be a communication issue where they're not buying into his, you know, it, when he says go, like you've got to be, you've got to trust your shot caller to be like, okay, we're going in because it's got to be instant. Otherwise the teams are so good now that they can react fast enough. If that instant burst or instant catch isn't, you know, instant, uh, they can yeah. come back and, and turn that fight around. So uh, I definitely agree. Uh, with you at that point did you have any other honorable mentions or anything for for support or was that pretty because i'm thinking my only honorable mention might be chime uh, yeah just because of uh you know part of the shot calling and stuff like that but yeah yeah i like what ayla had to bring too i think that he suffered from his team not you know really being that great when they're behind or losing Mm -hmm. uh part of that is you know switching junglers you know problems with arm out um but ayla i think he looked pretty good, honestly, most games. Uh, just 
you know, engage support, doing engage yeah. stuff. Like sometimes Ayla has a really insane engage. Uh, so I, I think he deserves a mention. And it's just why most of EG has not is not on my list is that when they're losing games, they all look dead in the water. They're, no one's making plays. No one's doing anything positive or good. Yeah. Uh, Chime. Man, if TSM didn't have such a bad end of the split, I actually think some some more of their players would have showed up on my list. Like I think sure. TSM had a really bad last week, and they ended out the week before uh, this last week with the Sejuani mid at the end. Mm, that just yeah. gave me a bad taste in my mouth. But like these guys were so close. It's like having Chime third to having uh, Insanity third for me, for having Wild Turtle third. Like These guys were so close. The last week, though, is the most important for me, and they really flubbed it. Um, they did. But when I'm looking at the season as a whole, yeah, I think Chime, he's just their engaged, right? He's their shot caller. I feel like Chime and Boogie work well together. Um, yeah, so honorable and, mention deserved. I mean, yeah, that's, you know, with the TSM note, that's one of the reasons why, again, I has, still have slight reservations on Insanity because mm-hmm. uh, his Jace was not good, his Nico was not good. Um, you know, I still have yet to see a good game from a non like ADC style mid, yep. but we have seen him in the past, you know, when he was on immortals to be good. So I'm not saying it's not there, but uh, you know, it's definitely going to have to pick up in playoffs because like you said, momentum is a big thing yep. and they lost their last four games. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's not, that's not a good sign. Um, all right. Now I, now Kevin gave me his MVP. Uh, he said for him, it's blabber. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have an MVP uh, candidate? And maybe you could list top two or top three, whatever you want. Yeah, uh, top three. uh, I think this might be uh, a bit different also than other people's. So I'm going to go in reverse order. Okay. So, <laughs> right. use the build up. Do the build up. You do, know, you do, the build up. do the build up. Do the build up. Okay, so uh, my third is actually going to be JoJo uh, for MVP. So even though he makes third all pro, which doesn't seem that high, he does actually make third MVP vote for me, which I think is, you know, higher than like what third all uh, third mid all pro would be because I like to do a combination of who's the most valuable player to the team and most valuable player to the league. So I know on the dive, like uh, specifically as Zale and Kobe, they say that their MVP is basically best player in the league, best player in the best team sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then other people, they like to do their their criteria is like, who's the most valuable player to this team, right? So like, um, if Berserker is the best player in the LCS, someone who's in that other criteria might put someone like Tactical. Because Tactical, even though is on the 10th place team, looks like the best player, is the most valuable yeah, to them. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. so I had JoJo third. I think he's the most valuable player to his team in a sense. But when I'm looking at the best player in the league criteria, he kind of falls a bit short. Sure. Um, for second place, it is Blabber. Uh, I actually think Blabber is also in that category of best player, best team. He gets second, though, because um, I think his team is just so good. And he does fit very well into just a really good team. So, But he's not always just the most valuable. He's almost like the most valuable player to his team. Because Berserker is sharing that spotlight right there with him. Uh, and the first is going to actually be... Da, 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 da. Who's it gonna be? It's gonna be Gory. I actually have Gory first oh, place okay. uh, at MVP. I think who he, I think is in a lot of people's minds, and I would agree that who he is a great support player, and he's been doing so much. But Gory just seems like he's just the complete guy. And Golden Guard is winning. Golden Guard is losing. Gory's doing well. Uh, mm-hmm. Gory's, I don't know. He just checks all the boxes I want in a mid laner for the LCS right now. And I think that he had such a wide berth amongst uh, the other mid laners and the other players. Oh my God. The, the, the things he was doing to other players, like he's getting pentakills on Jace. He's solo killing you in lane. He's getting like doubling your gold uh, at, at 15 minutes on the mm-hmm. block and stuff. Like I really feel like this guy was a complete player for me. So Corey was my MVP. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I think that, yeah. that that's great. And I, I like that you mentioned the criteria again, because MVP can mean a lot of different things. Yeah. Uh, and they could, people make their votes based on, you know, the, the internal criteria they held for them, you know, for themselves, how they judge players. For me, I'm going with the same criteria of if I had to pick a team, who's my first pick that I absolutely don't want anybody else to take. Yeah. Right? That's fair. So I'll yeah. start with three, two, uh, yeah. and then okay. work my way up. Uh, so my third one, uh, would probably be Berserker. Berserker, because yes. uh, Berserker is one of those ADCs that I think is on a whole nother level. 
the reason he's not any higher is because I think there's a lot of serviceable ADCs out there, right? So again, mm -hmm. going by my criteria of who am, who am I drafting for my team, uh, he would be like my third most prioritized one, just because I think there are other ADCs, while maybe not as good and may not have as many highlight plays, could still do their job pretty effectively. Uh, my second one would be Blabber, uh, mm -hmm. because again, not many junglers out there were that great. The, I mean, yes, we have River and possibly Contracts and Piosic, but uh, if I'm looking for like consistency and like who who do I need to secure what spot, what role do I need to secure? It's Blabber. Like I need a good jungler to make plays across the map, uh, potentially carry. I mean, he's played um, tremendous, you know, uh, kindred games and has had yep. some really memorable moments. So, and he could play the supportive style too, you know. So it, it really is kind of a jack of all trades. And I think that position as jungler, you kind of you you want that, you know. I would say jungler or support, right? Kind of being that uh, whatever you need kind of kind of deal, right? Um, so he would be my my number two, and the number one. Dun dun dun! dun, 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 dun. It actually, be gory, just like you. Oh um, wow! Let's even go. Had, even though I had did have JoJo, it was my first, you know, mid laner. That was in the context of like him fitting in that team. But if I'm looking at mid lane and I need a mid laner, and uh, you know, just I need to draft a, a team and I don't have anybody else picked out, uh, there's not that many candidates in the mid lane that I could pull. Like, um, you have JoJo, Gory. I, and then my third was APA and Insanity, but really, I don't know if I would want them that high on my list. Mm. Uh, and then, you know, who who are the rest there? Yeah, you probably have m &S, but again, not really. Like, if I want to secure my mid lane spot, which I still think is pretty important, uh, then it would definitely be Gore because he's just a jack of all trades. He can play it, yeah. play it all, could play a lot of different styles. Um, and the reason why I don't have like a top lane or support there is, again, I think there are enough in the top lane that you can service, you know, support is tricky. Uh, because definitely you need a playmaker and there's not that many like you have who he's van core jj but if i had to put them lower on the list i think you know core jj could service you know that spot i think ayla ignar could service that spot mm. so again i'm going in most valuable player and i think you know from what you can see from mine is like how scarce are they in their in their role as mm, well yeah like, you know is yeah. there anybody else that can do what they do and so that's kind of what i'm basing mine on but it's a fun it's a fun category because it is like it's the best of the best so if you were to just pick one player. Yeah. I think for me and you, it's gory. Um, yeah. So I think that's sure. pretty fun. Uh, yeah. There are some fun categories that Alistair had mentioned and, mm -hmm. you know, we could talk about that a little bit. Uh, so he had as his most improved, uh, he had summit. Uh, <laughs> do you Almost have anybody? Like <laughs> I know it's, it's kind of funny because <laughs> I want to say he's right up to a point, but then there are still some times where I'm like, did he really improve though? Because yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it still looks like the same summit uh, to me. Oh. Do you, do you agree? Do you have another person that you might put a, as most improved? Or I mean, I think putting most improved Team Liquid is pretty. If you put a Team Liquid player for most True. improved, I think it's yeah. pretty fair. Like these guys were so bad last split, and they're pretty good yeah. this split. Uh, yeah, I mean, my most improved. I'm not gonna put summit. I think you could put Pioshik or Yeon in here for most sure, improved. Yeah. Uh, I think I would probably put Pioshik. He he went from very inconsistent jungler that was kind of making these solo inti mega grief plays last split to uh being really high up there really consistent uh it, yeah. it's just such a big <laughs> change uh yon also is deserving of that um i also think you could put jojo here for most improved weirdly yeah, enough I was thinking that just too. just from last split to this split, mm -hmm. or maybe not as a, as a general player for his whole career but last split jojo was quite poor to mediocre in a lot of games mm -hmm. for eg uh this split i mean he's just been dominating so yeah most improved is fun to think about i think that's that's uh i think that's pretty fair for me um and i don't know if this really counts because i my memory's so bad did ignar play last split because i think he's probably been most he did play me. uh for like less than half a split on dignitas right it wasn't that yeah. much that's what yeah. i thought so um, you know, <laughs> again, it's not that much, and I'm sure the meta has helped him, the fact yeah. that we're in engaged supports. But again, like, I think from him being one of the kind of, like, almost out of LCS <laughs> kind of supports, right? Uh, I think the meta has really helped. But hey, kudos to him for leaning into that and making it work. Um, yeah, I it's... I don't Ignar is, I think, criminally underrated, because he's not even, like, that amazing amazing for the LCS, mm -hmm. but he is, like, unexpectedly good for everyone saying he's bad i think very he has a bit of a stigma in the like solo queue community is that he can be quite 
toxic he has that famous yeah. thing where he's flaming the hell out of sneaky like almost like six or oh, seven yeah. years ago uh -huh. <laughs> so i think a lot of people don't like ignore True. i i like i try to look past those things and I look at his play and i'm just like like i don't know what else to say about this guy except he makes a lot of crazy good engages so yeah i i think you know ignore from doing absolutely nothing and being completely invisible on the 10th place dignitas to where is now it's Quite a big improvement, yeah. <laughs> All right, sweet. Uh, okay, biggest surprise. Alistair has Insanity slash Wild Turtle. Yeah, I, I think that's fair for biggest surprise. Definitely Insanity... Uh, I had no hope for this guy at all. I mean, yeah. I had no hope for TSM. I think you True. put anybody on the TSM team, roster. Yeah, again, yeah, yeah, except for Hanser. Like, I think Hanser is <laughs> biggest surprise for how bad he was. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's biggest it's surprise rough. in the other way. Yeah, yeah like oh. um, biggest surprise. I mean, it's very similar to I think most approved award. Honestly, right. so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, okay, and his rookie, uh, which I think he counts for this, but APA? Yeah, um, yeah, he counts, I think. As far I, as, like, number of games played, does it does it count? I mean, either way, it doesn't matter. It's our list, so... APA. I mean, I don't. there weren't many other rookies that True. were just the split, right? There's rookies that started this year, but I don't mm -hmm. think for this split, I think he might be the only one, right? Because okay. Insanity is not a rookie, um, True. you know... Tomo's not a rookie. He was last split. Like, so it's, there's not a lot of rookies to choose from. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and honestly that I don't even, I mean, just APA had such an impact. I, I have to just hard agree. He's good. <laughs> like, he was yeah, just solid. Yeah. yeah. He showed yeah. up later than halfway through the split. Right. So he doesn't have a lot of games in his belt. And what he did show was he kind of revolutionized the meta with Ziggs, which yeah, is cool. Absolutely. Other people, other teams are picking him now across the world. So um apa deserves a nod i just, he hasn't played enough games to actually make any rankings in my list <laughs> yeah. okay i got one more award that uh you have to actually give out and i think yes you know this award. i know it what's is about to come it is the very <laughs> infamous fake god award but before you give it please explain to our viewers who might not know what the fake god award is <laughs> uh, how how it came about and what it, what it actually means and then give your actual candidate for the mitchell's fake god award all right this award is a very prestigious okay only a select <laughs> sure. few people have ever yes. earned this mm -hmm. fake god award if you've ever heard of the dotty award it's kind of similar but not quite dotty award is overhyped and then you know fails to live up to those expectations the fake god award is you're just straight garbage. You're like the worst player. <laughs> you're underhyped and you met those expect expectations. Uh, you maybe even went below them uh, below. somehow. <laughs> uh, the Fake God Award. Fake God is this player who is, by all means, not even that bad of a player. He's in no, he's NACL. Not. He's ripping it up. But he had so many terrible games in his last split yeah. that it was kind of unbelievable that it was possible. Um, other players that have won this award are Summit, Tactical, yes. uh, <laughs> Tactical. Uh, uh, Niles. Uh, there's a lot of players, that, uh, yeah, back in the day that have won this award. Yeah, um, yeah. Deservingly. So um, that is essentially the Fake God Award in a nutshell. You know, okay. it's in the name, the Fake God, right? Like it's right. it's just right in the name. So who will I be awarding it to? There are two big candidates this okay. split. Uh, okay. Number one, I think, is pretty apparent i already made fun of him it's hanser hanser uh, yeah, is yeah. um a big choice for number one number two choice is kenvi kenvi oh. is definitely deserving of the potential fake god award oh, and i have a third one he is third on the list because he's the least likely of these three uh because literally because of one game the split that he played i don't know if you know who it is his name is closer <laughs> yeah closer I, had argue with there he was very much on <laughs> this list. Yeah, except yeah. he had one good game all split. It was his uh, first, 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 first blood in 16 games. It was his 17th game played this year. He got Viego. He got first blood. He stole Baron. He had the most amazing performance. That is literally the only thing keeping him <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good for the running. <laughs> Otherwise, he, he would have been up there. But um, I want you to give uh who you think deserves a fake god award and i will yeah. anoint the crown of these two candidates that I've okay well i'll just give i just had one on my mind and i was wondering if you're gonna say it but honestly like well no i'll just say it it's it's diamond uh oh, was, okay was oh. on there i know he got replaced by poom and honestly mm -hmm. uh, poom didn't have enough games to really get thrown in that category but i didn't think he no. 
play that well either. So yeah, that's my only other addition to that candidacy. It's a good one. Uh, I forgot about so him. That, yeah, yeah, that that would that would be it. So you get to cr- did did you already crown it? Was that your who was your number one? Oh, okay. I haven't crowned it. Yeah, I was, okay. Yeah, uh, so I'm building those up are the, the candidates. Yeah, yeah so we got the we got yeah. the candidates. Those we are all great candidates. Pa- yeah. Also, comment below and in Discord who you guys think <laughs> your fake god. First of all, let me just caveat this fake god. If you're listening to this, which I know you absolutely are, we <laughs> do not. We are not disrespecting you. Mm-mm. You just happen to come up on a lot of things, and it just kind of came out organically. We love you as a player. I wish you the best in your career. Second Second of all, Hanser, you took a picture with me, okay, and Raleigh, and so much respect and appreciation for your career, right? I was a big yep. fan of 2016 TSM, so please uh, don't kill us with those uh, biceps of yours. So, yeah, with that said, yeah. let's uh, let's let's crown the fake god. Drum roll, please. Let us anoint the winner of the fake god award and the winner will go by this breaking criteria who was the funniest who made the funniest yes, plays okay absolutely. who was most entertaining and it was by far Hanser. Hanser was yes. absolutely the funniest player to make the most mistakes it was so goofy uh i think the one that stood out to me the most isn't even a play it's just an idea okay it's when tsm were were like purposely played Sejuani mid so they could get a strong counter pick for Hanser, and it mm-hmm. went so badly that it tilted TSM to go zero four at the end of the split. That's how uh, bad it was. It made yeah. hundred thieves. They they got hundred thieves in the playoffs by losing yeah, that game. They did. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, funny. So I think Hanser gets it because like. His whole team orchestrates all these flex picks to put Sejuani mid so they can get counter pick to Cassante top so that he gets his Gwen. And you know what he does? He gets solo killed by someday. Like, he literally is fighting on Gwen, yeah. snipping his hair, and Cassante is just auto-attacking him, beating him to death. He flashes away. You know what Cassante does? He just walks up and keeps killing him. Like, <laughs> he flashed, and he still died. And someday didn't even burn his up. I was just like... That's Hanser in a nutshell, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Strong side top. <laughs> Absolutely. So congratulations, Hanser. You won the Fake God Award. Um, no disrespect. Awesome. Please don't beat me no up. No disrespect. Yep. We just, uh, <laughs> somebody's got to get it. Look, man, there's no shame. You're you're still a professional gamer, so uh, congrats. I, I just w. think it's funny that yeah. the beginning of the split – they, he was so bad, they had to blind pick him Malphite every game because mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. didn't know what to do with him. We're like, it's I true. guess we pick a Malphite. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, <laughs> oh, I mean, so that funny. that kind of sums it up. You know, I, I wish maybe you guys can let us know, too, if there's other categories that we could probably fill in because I think it's fun to kind of go on these uh, little outliers. I mean, there were probably there were probably games that we could talk about, like best game of the split. Uh, I have I, mean, uh, I have some best plays. I can give you a okay, really me, quick highlight high reel. Let's do it. They're, they're, uh, they're all double lift. It was three times a split. Uh, double lift just gets absolutely railed from a mile off the screen. That's it's right, so yeah. funny. So the first one I think is against Cloud Nine. They just shoot like uh like a Kaisa W, a JSQ, and a Rebel T. He's just dead. <laughs> <laughs> I think Alistair there's another is is rolling right now. He is not happy. <laughs> yeah, he's still dead. And then there's another one. It's literally the same thing. He's in top lane. He's in double lift in his own base. I think he's playing against uh, TL or EG or something. It, it's not even three abilities. It's two abilities. It's just uh, it's the same ability. It's Kaisa W and JSQ. He's just dead <laughs> from two yeah. abilities. Yeah. Uh, and I think there was a third one. It was this past week. And I gave him a pass because he went to the hospital. So he was true, clearly true. dying. Yeah, true. But he was playing <laughs> Zaya. I think it was against, oh, yeah, it was against Immortals, I think. Uh-huh. Where, or maybe it wasn't against. It was against some team. Where it was like, yo, you're supposed to win this, bro. Oh, it was against Dignitas. That's right. Uh, yeah, he was playing Zaya, and he was just eating every freaking Kaisa W. There's this one mm-hmm. point where I literally see Buzio try to block it, and they both juke in a way where <laughs> Buzio misses the Kaisa W, and Double gets yeah. hit by it. And then like he's just like spamming, trying to auto attack to life steal, and he gets hit by another one. I'm like. Oh, double lift. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, no, yeah. I definitely agree. I think if we're talking about best game, mm. I think the C9 uh, 100 Thieves, I mean, C9 Team Liquid uh, game was, was the game. best one. Um, yeah. There were some other ones in there, but I think with those two caliber of team, uh, I think that that's pretty pretty good. That's fair. I There's so many. Uh, TL versus TSM was a very notice, notable one great. for me, yeah. too. That was fun as hell. Um the the first game that APA played Ziggs was really hype for me. I thought that yeah. was so awesome. Even though the game itself was kind of a stomp for Team Liquid, I thought that was cool. Um, to, just to highlight three teams, though. 
Golden yeah. Guardians, Team Liquid, and Energy. These three teams, if they're in the game, the game yeah. is a banger. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> These three teams were absolutely the most fun teams I, to watch. Wait, this who play. did you say again? Name your three again? Sorry. I... It was Golden Guardians, uh -huh. Team Liquid, and Energy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I was going to make sure. I was going to say, make sure, yeah, Team Liquid's in there. Because even if they're yeah. up, you know they're going to throw at some point, And then it'll it's be so annoying. fun. <laughs> it's just it's every so game fun. is a banger. Like, yeah. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I just know that something exciting is going to go down. People That's are, right. there's going to be 40 deaths in 20 minutes or something. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, exactly. Cool. All right. Well, this uh, to Thursday, we have TSM versus EG and then Energy versus Team Liquid. It's going to be exciting. Uh, we'll hold off on predictions uh, until we can get uh, Kevin and Alistair. Plus, no, it it's really happening matter. this Thursday. We have to do them now. Okay, let's do it now. Yeah, yeah we well, that's to... what I was going to say. I was going to say... Yeah. Um, all right, yeah, let's let's predict it real quick because I was going to yeah. say Kevin and uh, Alistair, but they can give us in their Discord. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we don't have time, right? Because if we right. release the episode yeah. tomorrow, the exactly. playoffs is this Thursday. So, you're right. Um, you're right. Uh, I yeah. So we mostly we focused entirely on the uh, all pro stuff, right, mm -hmm. and the rankings of the list. Um, but yeah, sh should we give like a quick, I don't know, just summary of how like the end of the split went down? Like, just be like. You know, FlyQuest, Immortals out. Um, any yeah. closing thoughts on these guys? Uh, stuff like that. That's a good idea. Let's do. Let's yeah. talk about the ones who were eliminated. So FlyQuest and Immortals gone. Uh, I mean, yeah. Everybody else is in playoffs. Uh, before we talk about them, let me just read the order. Uh, so mm. for people who aren't caught up. So in first place, we got Cloud9. They won the tiebreaker against Golden Guardians to secure that spot. Number yeah. two is Golden Guardians. Number three is Evil Geniuses. Number four is Team Liquid. Fifth oh. place is NRG. Uh, sixth place is TSM. Uh, seventh place Dignitas, and then eighth place is a hundred thieves. Uh, yeah. So FlyQuest and Immortals gone. Any final thoughts on them? Yeah, I mean, FlyQuest, man, they they did not make it. Mm -hmm. It literally, I don't think any everybody was coping and thinking that they would could make it. Literally until like they were eliminated, and it was weird. It, this this weekend in general was weird because it felt like by day two, once hundred thieves won that game, it was like oh, the rest of the weekend is kind of. Uh, Mm -hmm. kind of all settled like no, none of the games matter a ton yeah um, but for FlyQuest, i don't know man what the hell <laughs> happened i what do we even I say know. like i feel like we had to talk about them but then now that we're here i'm just like i don't even know what to say about them <laughs> Nothing to say. i mean you yeah. know i here's what i will say though um i will say that i hope they don't break up right it's it's a bad split yes i mean expectations low but i still believe <laughs> Just from going off the interviews, the speaker interview and all of that stuff, it seems like they have something going right, but then there's something that's also going wrong that they can't quite solve yet. And I just hope yeah. they give it a little more time during this off season to figure out what that is and shore that up because there is to me still potential. They weren't able to figure out in, in this split this time that they had, um, but I, for me, hope that they give one more split a chance. And if it really doesn't even look competitive, then you give up on it. Um, that's my thoughts. But I see you kind of, kind of giving the smirk. That's, you don't think so. I mean, I am just say there's zero chance this team sticks together. Like okay. zero percent. Like Papa Smithy joined uh, FlyQuest. He didn't even put this roster together. Like yeah. Yeah, this roster. Is, I can imagine Papa Smithy is real pissed. That this is his debut as a GM for FlyQuest, yeah. and he is going to want a very different roster to represent him and his legacy. Uh, I guess it's also not uh, helpful that they swapped out Vikla, uh, yeah. you know, and put One a Spyra Spyrax uh, in. So it's already looking like they're itching to to pull that trade trading trigger. So yeah, I. I I personally think, right, like if we think of the off season, I think all these players are still contracted for the next year mm -hmm. or two or whatever. But realistically, like contracts never actually last their full duration. Yeah. I mean, Prince and Vikla, they're going to Korea for vacation, right? Right? Like mm -hmm. they're probably maybe already going there. Like they might be Prince might already flown home like on Thursday before LCS was even finished, right? <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, right, he's just yeah. like, I already booked my I flight, go. dude. I, I we're knew done. we were making it. <laughs> yeah. yeah okay. So uh, what kind of stuff can they figure out if like half their team is not even in the same country? True. I think it's doomed. I think Prince is not going to be an NA. Like unless someone drops a massive money bag for him to stay, he's going back to Korea and yeah. he's, he's gone. He's done. So I, I also think there's zero chance FlyQuest keeps Vikla. It was just too big of a disappointment. You know, yeah. for 
Okay. For his name, uh, I would. I think if you're FlyQuest, you should try and hold on to Impact, Speaker, and Vulcan. If you can get these three guys on the same sure. page, Impact and Vulcan have already won stuff together, right? Uh, yeah. Spika was working great with Impact before Vulcan showed up. So, I think you keep these three guys, maybe, and try to fill something out the rest. But Impact, he carries a big name. He he's a big fan of changing teams these these days. Uh, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if next split we see him picked up by a team that really needs a, a good top laner uh yeah, for sure. smurf up there so um yeah. i think this team's blowing up though i think we're gonna yeah. see very few people say the same i hate to uh admit it but you're you're sounding like uh that might be more of a reality uh I, it would be these... fun to roll run yeah. it back it'd be fun I mean, I th- I, i'm always a fan of like letting teams try to like you know figure things out because especially in esports it's like man if you don't win now let's change things I, up you know. Medios talks about on his co-stream all the time, amongst other pro players too, that like one thing that's the problem with uh, especially LCS, North American League of Legends, is that you can never get a team to stick with each other long enough to build right. synergy, right? Um, one of the reasons why C9 did so long, did so well for so long is because they just had the same mid laner and the same ADC for ages. It was just Jensen yep. Sneaky for every iteration. Eventually, over the years... They just started making all the international results that and it has, you know. And then now that you stick them apart, right? What has C9 really accomplished? They made quarters once. They haven't had the same roster. That's why this current C9 roster is great because three or four of them have just been sticking around in the org forever, and now they're just first all the time. And you look at other rosters, right? T1, it's maybe not the greatest example, but T1, Gen G, like these guys, they've stuck together and they are always top of the world. Like yeah. they might not, not be winning everything, right? But to consistently be like what second best in the world, third best in the world, fourth best, it's really hard. You gotta stick with the same people, I think. Yeah, that's such a uh, great, you know. And you could do a deep dive on that because it, it's mm. it's happening in other sports now, where you know uh, where longevity used to be kind of a a team thing, where teams would stick it out, you know, yeah. through good times and bad. Because it builds stuff. It builds that chemistry, which is an intangible that you can't see, but is greatly, greatly beneficial and important in winning championships, you know, multiple yeah. championships. So I definitely think that is definitely uh, apparent in, um, you know, esport culture, but it's happening elsewhere, too. So, yeah, uh, it's not it's not a, it's not just here. But um, let's let's predict these games real quick. And then I have one final question after that to ask you uh, and then we'll, we'll close out the episode. So first is TSM and EG. Uh, I'm actually excited for this. I'm excited, uh, yeah. You know, though, I, I just got to say that uh, had TSM not been 0 and 4 these past four games, I would like their chances much better. Uh, but I'm going to say EG wins this and I'm going to say it's three, one, just cause I, I think EG is good enough. And I also thought they played better this last week. Yep. Um, so just, you know, how we talked about those final games, where do they, you know, end up to me, EG went up, TSM went down and that's yep. where I think it's going to end up, uh, going for this series. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, yeah, I'll, EG, the one caveat for me is they have Sheedon, right? He got, he got yeah. put onto the roster at the very last minute and he has looked a lot better. I think he has like a hundred percent win rate or something. He has not lost yet, which is mm-hmm. great. It's impressive. It's only four games or three or four games for Sheedon. Um, honestly, it's so hard for both, either of these rosters, right? Because, um, you know, noticeably TSM, they went down at the end of the split, but they've been stuck. They've been together a bit longer. They they would have more things. They were, they were being a bit more experimental with their drafts in the last weeks. This is a tough one. Both teams are quite inconsistent. I think EG, though, is more defined in what they're good at. They are yeah. great in the early game. They are great at getting a huge mid lane advantage. And they're great at, I don't know, just playing a game methodically and closing it out aggressively and quickly. TSM definitely struggles in the early game in almost all of their games. And is just great at team fighting and being coordinated on the same page. They have their strengths in different spots, right? This, this series could very well be like TSM shows up a bit more than we expect. EG shows down a little bit more than we expect. EG wins every early game, but TSM wins every late game team fight. 3-0 TSM. Like, that's a world we could live in. Or True. we could live in a world where EG 3-0s them because every early game is a stomp. TSM never gets to show why they're good because the mid-game fights are too, are too, they're too behind. Um, 
I'm going to go on the EG train. They've shown me more recently. I have more faith in the EG players in a in a tense scenario when playoffs really matters. Um, so I'm going to go EG. I think I'm going to go 3-0, actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. that's I think that's fair. Um, also, just to maybe add more fuel to that fire is that uh, the la- very last game was this matchup, and EG yep. won pretty handedly. So, yep. um, sure I did. think that's that's again not something to, to factor in. All right, Team Liquid versus uh, NRG. Uh, they split um, the matchups one and one between both teams, yep. and honestly. Um, Last week, you know, before this past week's games, I would have probably said TS uh, Team Liquid um, pretty definitively. But now I'm actually pretty split 50-50 here yeah, because energy one. definitely has improved. I think they're a little more consistent in showing consistency and like, <laughs> it, you know, kind of what they're uh, winning, you know, and how they're winning. Um, gosh, I really don't know. Do you have more of a clue? Because I'm still trying to work it out in my head. Because I don't really know either. Both of these yeah. teams are. Uh, it's going to five games. I know that for sure. I think so. I think <laughs> so. Yeah. I think that's one thing I'm more confident in is that it's yeah. five games. It's going to go to five games. It's going to be back and forth. There are going to be a lot of throws. I just really. It's going to be a great series, I think. <laughs> it's going to be a fun series where there's a lot of kills and a lot of yeah. throws. And I expect both teams to pick out some very weird champions in draft. Like I know mm. all these players on all 10 players in this, in this match or have wide champion pools and are going to be pulling out weird stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure. We're also heading into a new patch 13.14. That's going to be playoffs, True. I believe. So like all of our expectations are just going to be a little bit tinged because it's not going to be the same patch. Um, I don't really know who to pick either. I actually thought about this for a bit and I think I'm going energy, but you could convince me to go Team Liquid before I lock it in. But honestly, I think I'm going Energy. I like Dokla more than Summit. I think that what happened with Summit in the playoffs before is just teams figured out that you could camp his ass and you could really focus your jungle pathing to shut Summit down, and he could not keep up. He fell behind, and he couldn't make it work. I... I think it's too easy to do, but at the same time, right? Energy also doesn't go top lane ever, so I I have more faith in Dokla in the, in the later stages of the game uh, than than Summit. But I have more faith in Summit than in the early parts of the game, you know. Um, <laughs> I, I have more faith in in Ignar in the later parts of the game than Cordage. I think Cordage's laning phase and Yeon and Cordage as, as a bot lane duo is one of the better ones. But when you get later on, I feel like you know Cordage does more. But then. Here's the problem: is Yeon, I think, is more consistent in the late game than FBI. Like FBI throws and dies right. and gets caught. So it's like these this guys are very, so. This is this is a very kind of split. I I, I see where you're going. It's it's yeah. very back and forth. Even if you go like matchup by matchup, it's yeah. very like oh it's my very, gosh, like they, I don't know. they're opposites of each other, and they, but then their teammates complement each other in the exact same ways that the other members would like i feel like what yeah. what dokla lacks like the other players bring up and then what summit lacks the other players bring up it, it's it's a cool matchup it's a very fun one i think for mid lane uh i think apa is a pretty good player and he it's his first playoffs he's a rookie we'll see how it goes i know palafox can show up he's been showing up in playoffs whenever they take it super close to cloud nine whenever they almost qualify for worlds last year against the against team liquid with their other roster so um contracts in pile fox i think are gonna be very reliable in this playoff situation pioshik and apa are going to be big question marks i think pioshik has the potential to be clutch clutch enough to win a world title you know clutch enough to be the best in the entire world but will he actually do it in like a match where you know they have another life right this is they're not even gonna be 100 percent sweating necessarily i think energy is going to take it i think tl might be a bit stronger when it comes to elimination match. I think like players like Pioshik and Cordy J, they, they they get better when the stakes are higher, usually. Mm-hmm. Um, but and I actually think energy get worse when the stakes are higher, true. So the stakes are lower yeah. in this match. I'm going energy. Yeah. I think I'm going okay. energy. Yeah. Uh yeah, I think you know, even if you look at their this last week, they both went one and two. So it's not like they had great last weeks. I mean energy literally. lost to immortals, man. Literally That's, like beat yeah. good team, lose to bad team. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um These you know, teams, I, I 
I think it's really hard too because I think there have been in my mind more times where energy has yes they've thrown some games but they have also won some games that they were losing and have kind of come back and and made good impacts um so it's really hard for me to <laughs> kind of decide here I'm gonna pick um gosh I'm gonna pick oh this is even hard because I'm trying to think of experience uh, well, who, my who do you like question mark yeah well, my biggest question mark would be APA, right? Because no. this is more of a, a staked game. This is not regular season. This is, and I guess you do. It's double limb, right? So, so you he has still another, get another life. chance. So yeah. it's not like it's it's over. Um, so let me let me help you time. out. I'm yeah, help you please. Out, okay, please. So uh, we have two other podcasters who sometimes do this with us. Who do you like more, Kevin or Alistair? Because they oh, do represent both teams. <laughs> Kevin is a Team Liquid stand. Alistair's a big fan of NRG. So who do you like more? <laughs> okay. I will say this, and I'm doing this for pure <laughs> ego, right? I do think that when it comes to predictions, Kevin is way more right, even though he is a Team Liquid fan. Yeah. And typically, Alistair's like, predictions and stuff, I'm not really on the same page as him a lot of times. So I think for pure, like, who am I going to – who's right? I think yeah. it would be Kevin, so I'm, I guess I'm going Team Liquid here. Sorry, Alistair. I love you, but uh, you know, I think even Alistair would tell you that his prediction record isn't the greatest because he usually just goes by his, <laughs> you know, whatever. He's usually yeah. like, I'm gonna just he, throw this in there. So. He is he has a he has a bunch of random criteria that random he criteria throws, throws exactly. in for fun. Uh, so I don't think he'll be offended yeah. when I say uh, I'm going yeah. with uh, Kevin's Team Liquid here. But again, that's totally random. That's I flipped the coin and Kevin won that. Uh, so, but here's, I wanted to do one last thing before we close out the episode, because we're about an hour and a half, but I think it's important because we've got, you know, three, you know, so there's four teams potentially uh, going into worlds, right? I think C9, Golden Guardians, um, and Team Liquid, I think were at least on mine and Kevin's list. Uh, I don't, I can't remember if you and Alistair had them on the list, but uh, flag, like, so who takes that, that fourth spot you know because right now it's eg do you think eg retains that spot into possibly you know being a fourth seed or you know even a third seed to make it to worlds or do you think anybody can take that that spot from them uh this is a tough one for the second the third and fourth spots c9 gs yeah they're pretty locked for me i think sure. uh so they so how it works is c9 gs have to win one best of five in any of the next series and they're mm -hmm. they're locked for worlds and yep. then every other team has to win at minimum two best of fives to okay. lock worlds. Yep. So EG already have them winning one of them. Um, so they True. need to win one more after that. It would, it's going to be, uh, let me look at the, stand, uh, the bracket. Uh, schedule, LCS. Okay, so EG would have to beat C9 next, and then they would drop to the... So I'm imagining they lose to C9 and then drop to the lower bracket, so EG mm -hmm. has to just win one more around there. I think the team that, that breaks it in, I mean, I don't know if I have even Team Liquid making it to Worlds, right? Yeah, um, yeah. I actually do think yeah. EG has a pretty good shot, just because I have them winning the first series, and they need to win one more, which... Is not going to be Cloud Nine, but it could be anybody of Energy, TL, Dignitas, Under Thieves, like these guys. I actually, yeah, I favor uh, EG, and I think okay. they are probably the worst of the top four, right? So like, I I'm more confident that EG makes it into top four, but I think like they would still be worse than like Energy, or they would be worse than Energy or Team Liquid still. Like, gotcha. I think in a, I I feel like Energy and Team Liquid are stronger teams than EG. But Energy and Team Liquid are on the side of the bracket where it's maybe harder to get two series off. True. Yeah. So I think EG, and I think I guess I'm saying Energy over Team Liquid because they have the winning the first one. Yeah. I actually I think Energy also has a chance. If they beat Team Liquid, they also have one of the better chances to beat Golden Guardians outside of C9. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I think they they're known to be top teams. So you know, God, but you see, the know. problem is, energy is such chokers when it matters the most. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, didn't we say though that it was mainly Poom and Luger that you That's know they did that? So they're not there anymore. Maybe it'll be That's different. True. You know, FBI has a lot of experience. Uh, you know, maybe I've he... also been burned too much by Team Liquid, man. I was burned so hard last year. I was literally sure. a Team Liquid supporter up until like what spring finals or spring semifinals, and I was like, yeah, fuck, 
team looked good. I hate you guys. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> uh, their yeah. team was so good last split, but it was not enough. I'm I'm going to go for now. Energy EG, who I think is is going to be going along C9 GGS. Yeah. I think that's fair. Um, okay. Well, I still think it'll be, uh, e- you know, EG and Team Liquid uh, mm. that are going to be in there. So, uh, but again, like I could definitely see Energy slipping in there uh, at some point. So. I I could see a world where EG makes it, but I still think Team Liquid is a better. Exactly. Team yeah. Like- <laughs> I, I, I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. Um, okay. Any final thoughts that you got? We, we've covered a lot. It's funny because before this recording, we were like, this might be a really short episode. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> an hour and 30 it never fails uh well, we yeah got, you got a lot to talk about uh it <laughs> yeah. was you know it's an interesting last uh you know so it's, it's the end of the regular season the start yeah, of playoffs it's always season. fun That's, oh, um I'm excited. I'm excited for yeah these games i the the meta has been interesting we're heading into a new patch i don't even remember what happens in 13.14 i will say okay this is completely off tangent actually we're gonna talk about some random stuff now so okay. i played nefiri the new champion yeah. She's she's crazy. She's got a little doggies. But something that was really stupid that was happening to me is I played against Zillion and Bard. Okay, so actually I posted a highlight in the Discord. I didn't say much. You can check it out in the Discord in the highlights section. But what can happen is Zillion can put a bomb on your dog, and then your dog follows you. And I tried to run away from my dog, and it killed you me. Can't. <laughs> it couldn't. It killed me. I died to a zillion bomb on my dog. I literally yeah. got terrorized by my own puppies. Okay? It was miserable. Um, that's a hard counter. Second, this is the hardest counter I've ever seen in a game for a matchup, okay? Bard. Uh, the the dogs are just surrounding you. There's You have like five dogs, okay? Bard was stunned. literally just throwing cues at me, <laughs> and I was getting stunned because my dog was next to me. He literally, he could throw, Bard could throw a cue at any angle. As long as one part <laughs> hits me, I got stunned by my doggies. He did it to me like three times in one game, man. It was so bad. Other problems are Ludens. My dog will get hit by a skill shot and I'll get, I'll get the Ludens prop. I'm yeah. just like, bro, why are you, why are you griefing me, doggies? Like, just yeah. dodge. It's... This champion, I mean, it was overstated. It got hotfix nerfed, but like some of these interactions are so bad. I never want to play this champion again. Also, I think uh, I don't know. Ben, this is not as broken out, and I'm not a hundred percent confirmed on this. But I think if uh, I think all your dogs drop uh, like Senna souls, uh, oh, so you get like five or six uh. right out, uh, if you kill Nefiri. I've seen it a couple times on YouTube, but I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. But yeah, that's pretty crazy. You know, if you're a Senna player. I do know for other interactions for Nefiri's dogs is Alistair passive. If when they die, he'll heal his teammates more. So it's ah. also the same for uh, Malzahar and stuff like that. If they die, the little pets, mm-hmm. then Alistair gets more healing. Uh, also, uh, Trundle passive, he'll also get healing a little bit from uh, that. And then uh, if you're Nasus or Cho'Gath, if you kill them, you'll heal or get stacks. Uh-huh. Yeah. So okay. there is a lot of bad matchups, specific interactions for Nefiri. Uh, she he. She is a dog. I don't know. The dog is a great... A, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. It's a dog. I mean, uh-huh. <laughs> fun champion. Really, like, yeah. it's kind of simple, but, like, the the freaking turn into a giant monster, then dash at somebody. Yeah. It's, it's pretty fun. Simple fun. champion. So many bad interactions. I hate it. Oh, my God. I wish yeah. they, like, make her less OP, but remove the bad interactions. They make it so awful to play. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with that. And that's going to be yeah. definitely a nightmare if... Because I don't know if all of that is intended. Maybe it is. If it is, that sucks. And if it isn't, they got a lot of stuff to to go back in there and fix. So, bro, um, I I it was so tilting playing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, well, let's wrap this puppy in a bow. Uh, you like I did that? Sorry, I gotta I go. I'm sorry. Okay, I really I can't stay for the end of this. <laughs> all right. Well, it's been a fun episode. Thank you, Mitchell, for joining me. Uh, for those of you listening out there, if you haven't already, join our Discord. It's fun to talk league and lcs and all that good stuff but until next time enjoy your climb on the rift split two is started by the way uh or season two i don't know how they call it emerald gaming baby emerald gaming baby uh yeah try not to be too toxic uh and we'll see you on the next episode peace